Hello, we built a bookcase that's way better than anything that we could have bought. But it doesn't hold any books. It holds something far more valuable. LEDs. LEDs. I love LEDs. So we have this shelf. It's just anything that you pick up at like any sort of like big box store, just general everyday shelf. It's cool, it served a purpose, but unfortunately for everybody involved, it's boring. So we're gonna replace it with something way cooler with metal piping, LEDs, and some other third thing. Come on, let's, let's go, come on. The black iron pipes come coated in grease to keep them from rusting. So the first step is to clean that grease off so you can work with it. Since we live in a swamp with high humidity, we'll be sure that these pipes get painted fairly quickly. We don't want any rust. In this bookcase, the wooden frame will hold no shelves. That's the job of the pipes. So here I'm assembling all the pipes into two vertical shelf holders. Those horizontal bits of pipe you see will hold the shelves. They'll be bolted to the back of the wooden frame. And here are both completed shelf holders. This is just another example of the weird stuff we build at our shop that makes people say, why do you build weird stuff in your shop? Then it's time for a quick trip outside into the swamp on Cardi McCartface, our shop cart, to get a coat of paint. Now we don't have to worry about rust anymore. Now that the pipes are together, we have to create the wooden pillars. Now what some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed is, there's gaps here. This bookcase has four vertical pillars, and each pillar is made of two strips of oak that are attached together. Here I'm gluing them and clamping them. And here's all four pillars. We use a lot of clamps in our shop, but that's because if there's only one or two of you working, you can really use the extra hands the clamps give you. The back of the bookcase will be a quarter inch piece of oak face luan plywood, and the slots I'm making here will hold that plywood. The pillars are separated to provide that slot you saw earlier, and the first step to creating that slot is to put these little separators in between the two left pillars and the two right pillars. This will be reinforced later, but these will enforce the distance between the pillars. With the separators holding the pillars together, reinforcement is glued and screwed in place. Okay, me mateys, you need to pull out your treasure maps. We gotta find a place for these pipes to attach, except that I've already found it. It's this top piece, but, you know, a top piece only works if it's part of a pair. It's here, it's at the bottom, it's the other pair. It's right here, I found it. Um, good job, super sleuths, we solved it. Let's, let's make these pieces. Pocket screws are used to make a wide shelf out of the thin boards that we had. Also, because we're lazy and pocket screws allow us to assemble things very quickly. And then the bottom shelf is attached. This bottom shelf does three things. It's the strength piece that holds the pillars together. It's the piece that separates the pillars from each other. And it's the top to the hidden storage compartment at the bottom of the bookshelf. Then it's time to put the top piece in place. I've temporarily put the two pipe shelf supports in place just to make sure that this shelf is put at the right height. I don't want to find out that I measured wrong later, so why not just use the real thing? Just to make sure everything fits. Now these pillars are super cool. They're the most amazing thing ever. But unfortunately, since we just made this top part and also the bottom part, which we've previously discussed, uh, it created a gap and we needed to fill it. We may not be dentists, but we filled the gap. A strip of wood is used to fill that gap, it's just glued on, but this will give us a wider shelf, and lots and lots of clamps are used to hold it in place to make sure that it is invisible once the paint dries. We were actually pretty successful at this, on both the top and the bottom shelves. Okay my friends, there's some impostures amongst the mix. Most of the structure is made out of oak, which is fantastic, super great, amazing wood to use. But some of it is made out of pine. Now pine is great because it's super strong and it's a lot cheaper. And it doesn't really matter if you paint it. Uh, those pieces include the crown and the drawer. 
And speaking of the drawer, it's time to build it. The drawer is made out of pine because pine's cheap, it's lightweight, which makes the drawer easy to handle and easy to work with. To keep things simple and cheap, this drawer will have no hardware. It's just going to lay on the floor and slide into the base of the bookcase. That way when you pull it out, you can just carry it off and do whatever you want with it. And we don't have to deal with the hassle of putting in drawer runners. And once again, we're using a lot of clamps here, not just for the drawer, but for those gap fillers we put on the bottom and top of the bookcase. Our clamp holder is getting kind of empty, but those clamps sure do work well. Once the glue is dry, it's time to glue and screw the drawer onto its faceplate. The faceplate is wide because it masquerades as the trim at the bottom of the bookcase. It will hide this drawer so no one will know what we have stored inside of our bookcase drawer. Okay, it's a lightsaber. We keep a lightsaber in our secret drawer. Now you know. The final piece of the structural puzzle was the back, and then it was time to stain. The centerpiece is glued in place. It's a piece of Luan plywood with an oak face, so it's fake oak. But this thin piece of wood that fits into those slots on the left and right pillars will keep the bookcase from racking back and forth. It makes it pretty solid, even though it's thin. Now it's time to stain. The bookcase is sitting on another small cart that we use around the shop that has no name. But if you have a small wood shop like we do, we highly recommend wheeled carts to move your work around. It makes things so much easier. That took a while, but it's all done now, and we're ready to move to the next step. Here at Atomic Dairy, we like to go to a place that I like to call Paint Town USA. And this time we're going to paint the crown in the drawer. To paint small objects like this, we have a fold-out paint booth that vents to the outside. We love this thing because it only comes out when we need it, and it folds flat when we don't. The drawer on the bottom and the crown up top are both painted with the same paint we painted the black pipes with. We try to match things and be stylish that way. Sometimes it works. The pipes support the shelves. Before the shelves to be supported by the pipes, the pipes must be attached to the rest of the structure. Let's attach it. The pipes will support four shelves. They're lightweight shelves and they're not going to hold anything terribly heavy. This is a display bookcase after all. So we're using half inch wood screws to hold everything in. These screws are small, but honestly the flanges give us so many holes to put screws in, it's almost overkill for the attachment. This is a bookcase that needs shelves, so we should probably make shelves. The four shelves are four oak strips that are glued together edge to edge. That way we can use cheaper wood to build a wider shelf because we're cheap. And this time we used so many clamps we nearly emptied our clamp rack. But there's our four shelves, all ready to go. Then the shelves are stained in polyurethane to match the rest of the bookcase. Looks like one piece of wood, doesn't it? That's what clamps do for you. As you can see, there's some LEDs that are behind me. They're pretty great, but you need a place for the sensor. Uh, so we put it here, and but we have to make it, so see what we did. The first step to making the centerpiece is to take this scrap piece of oak and drill a hole into it, or as big of a hole as we could with our circle cutter. The piece was stained and polyed off camera, but here you can see us put pilot holes so we could attach the grate. The sparkly felt behind the grate is going to hide the sensor for the LEDs. A fun fact about this felt, it's actually left over from an old project, uh, the Techno Desk, which is my personal favorite project. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should probably watch the Technodesk video after this one. After the grate is mounted, we pocket screwed on the wings, and now the crown is ready to be mounted. It took a little bit of finagling to get the crown in the correct position, but once we got everything level, it attached beautifully and looks amazing. Also, I hope you like my copper tubing tiara. I wear it exclusively in the workshop. Yeah, that's gonna work. That's gonna work. So the LEDs are hidden. We only want you to see them when we want you to see them. The LEDs snake down from the top and go around in a circle. They do shine down into the drawer, but I mean, that's more of a perk than anything else.
These LEDs have an adhesive backing that we use to attach them to the bookshelf. What's the difference between these screws that I have in my hand and these screws here? Nothing. These ones are just painted because we didn't want to look like posers. We just couldn't get the right screws. We sprayed some spray paint into a cup and then took a paintbrush and brushed it onto the screws. And after that, the project was completed. Voila! A whole bookcase. Not a half, but a whole. The best part about this bookcase is that by day, it's just a normal everyday bookcase. But by night, it can go to parties, which I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't. The bookcase does. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you especially to our patrons. Uh, you guys are amazing. It's because of you guys that we get to build things like this. So again, very special thank you for you. Uh, if you are not subscribed already, please subscribe. Like the video, comment. We like to read the comments. And uh, ring that bell if you don't want to miss an upload. Anyways, see you later. Goodbye.